Hey, and welcome back to the Dice Tower. I'm Camilla. I'm Z. We're going to be taking a look at Battletech, a paint starter kit here. Uh, this is going to be specifically by the Army Painter for their Battletech line, mm -hmm. but I do think it can be used for anything. Um, I did use it, or we did use it, I'll say, on Battletech Mini specifically. Went through all the steps and want to kind of give you a perspective from someone who's new to painting. Mm -hmm. And me, I'm not new, but I'm also not an expert, I'd say. I've painted probably about 50 miniatures or so, so okay. we'll say a, a beginner painter. So with that, let's jump in and take a look at the steps. All right, so in this set, you're going to get a, a paintbrush to start with. Right, which the starter one, brush. Right, and that brush can be used for everything, mm -hmm. um, from the primer to the the base coat and all that. You're going to come with nine paints total, five of which are speed paints, a primer, a metallic, and then some standard paints as well. Right. right. So they're calling war paints. War paints, right. Just standard paints. So I guess before we get to the steps, let's just talk about that right there. Yeah. Right off the bat, on the back, it tells us about what comes in it. Yeah. But there's not a whole lot of explanation for right, it. Like no. if someone knew, what would you kind of interpret that as? Yeah, we were kind of talking about that, and I, I know what, what speed paints are now, because I've painted a little bit, but yeah, I think if I picked this up and I was into battle tech, maybe I uh, didn't know how to paint at all. This was truly step one, which I think is its intended, intended purpose. On the back it tells me, you know, dive into the epic hobby of miniature painting, you get 10 bottles on a brush. Great, I know what a brush is, I know what a brush does. What I don't know is what a speed paint is. I don't know what that means. And in fact, I did until recently know what that meant. What's a speed paint? Uh, do I paint quicker? I don't, that doesn't mean anything. And so it just really says five speed paints for even quicker transition to game play. You can play faster because you paint faster. Or does it dry quicker? I really so don't right. know, yeah, and I yeah. wish they would have explained what that meant. And I think part of the confusion might be coming, I mean, the most familiar term is contrast paints, right? But that's GW or Citadel specifically, and so they can't use that here. Their version of those contrast paints are speed paints. But to your point, that's not explained anywhere on here. Right, and to be fair, if it was contrast paints, they'd have to explain that to me too. Oh, it doesn't right. really mean that's anything, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I would have, you would have to tell me what, what's meant by that. So yeah, that's one thing that I wish right off the bat, they would tell me a little more right on here what that mm -hmm. meant, what comes in here, and, and what it does, you know? Yeah, you get to the guide, which we're going to dive into here in a second, but it still doesn't really tell you what a speed paint does. They tell you right. how to apply it. Yeah. But they don't really explain to you, here's why. Right. You know? That, that, that I thought was a drawback. Yeah. I think with that point, let's just jump into step one yeah. because I have a similar point for that. Uh, step one is for priming the miniature. So this is, you have, do have to put a primer on the plastic so that the paint will stick, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and so to that, just not understanding kind of the expectation of the different types of paint. There's not a whole lot of expectation on what this is going to look like after you prime it. And that was a real drawback. Even me having primed, like I said, lots of miniatures at this point, the, the brush on primer can be spotted looking and not spotted, kind of um, inconsistent. It's yeah. not like a final color and it sure does not look like the picture here where they have this beautiful, pr beautiful pristine white primed miniature. Yeah, this looks like it got spray painted is right. the way this looks on their picture. And again, this is your guide right here. Um, that it did not look like this and we did this work on the the you know what it's meant to be on mm -hmm. basically these uh mechs but yeah it was just you could tell there were, it was kind of it felt like i took a little mech and covered it in white out you know good right. old school yeah, yeah. white out for correcting mistakes right yeah yeah, because it was so, there were, you could see all the strokes, didn't look even, and so right away, I personally remember thinking, oh, is this right? Am I doing right. this correctly? I haven't, I haven't ever painted on Prime, uh, like, a, I'm sorry, a base coat mm -hmm. like this, so I wasn't sure if, yeah, I wasn't sure what it was supposed to look like. I've seen them covered, and they look spray painted, because that's what I've seen before. And that's a little bit of a gut punch on step one, if you're yeah. already kind of questioning yourself. Right. Like, did I do this right? And it mentions in here to thin it down with a couple drops of water. Well, 
if you don't know or don't have any reference for that, what co consistency are you looking for? Did I thin it down too much? Is that why it's pulling in the, in the recesses? Um, did I not thin it enough? Is that why it's gloopy? Like you don't know this because you don't have a frame of reference if you're coming into it. Right. Right. So I think that that was kind of, it's a hard first step without some more clear expectations of what the primer is going to look like at the end and what you can kind of build on. It's also, they, they say that here and then a few times throughout where they do this whole thin it down with a couple of drops of mm -hmm. paint. To how much paint? Right. Am I opening the bottle and putting two drops of water in there and shaking it? Yeah. How much paint to water? That's not right. useful if you only give me half the equation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you sell me a bottle of detergent and you're like, thin it down with a cup of water to this right or to like this much yeah you know so i i thought that that was a little problematic as well again if you're really going for painting 101 here this is a little lacking in detail there and i will say to its benefit or to its credit it also comes with a painting guide mm -hmm. which goes into some more detail but the two are not very well connected. You know, if it's talking about thinning down, then refer me to this, this guide here where you're showing, you know, page 17, how to thin down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it talks about what that consistency should be. So I understand maybe you wanted this to be one page, but then utilize this other resource that you've already given me. Or right, make know, reference to it. Right, yeah. right. Help me. Um, because this also goes into a bunch of stuff you don't need, like airbrushing and mm. basing and things like that. So I think just either expanding this quick start to include that and make it its own little booklet instead of a leaflet or reference this big reference guide you've already given me. Right. So yeah, so step one, uh, priming, I think it, it kind of left a little, little gut punch, a little like, oof, I don't, I don't know. Did we do this right? You know, like, yeah. but let's trust the process and maybe I'm not as bad as I think I am, you know, right. and keep going and see what these uh, speed paints are about, which is step number two is speed paints. So speed paints are going to be, like I said, like the contrast paints or something like that, that are trying to give you everything from that wash to the highlighting in one step, a full right. range of color in one step. So you apply it uh, a little bit thicker than you would normally and let it uh, flow into the recesses to give you those darker recesses and the lighter highlights as well. Okay. Right. What, are you, what were your thoughts or your first impressions, I guess, of this step? I really thought this step went well. I, you know, we basically took uh, four miniatures and split them up and sort of, you know, I did a couple and you did a couple and I thought it, it went very well. I really liked the, the how vibrant these paints are. Mm -hmm. And I thought right away there, you start painting them on and it starts to come alive. It really does start to look good, you know. And even though, again, you or I need needed someone, and so would you, I guess, if you're starting, someone to explain to you what's a speed paint, why use this, why how, how does it work, what's it do. Once you start putting it on there, it, it, it reinvigorates a lot of these other steps that it sort of made me feel a little weary about the whole thing. Yeah. I thought the speed paints went on well. We had a couple of issues uh, with the consistency of some of these paints. Yeah. Like they weren't all behaving the same way, mixing the same way, sort of, you know, painting or streaking the same way. But I, I did find them to be very vibrant, look good. And immediately again, I was like, oh, okay, I'm getting this. This is working out. Yeah, for sure. I think the two drawbacks that I saw of, of the speed paints at this step were what you said, the consistency. The blue specifically behaved more like just a medium. It was just kind of gloopier than the other colors, mm -hmm. you know? And so that was a little like, oh, did I not shake it well enough? You know, is it? And so I stepped back, I, you know, kind of aborted and then went back and um, reshook the, the paints and all that and just reset the, the palette. And it was the same, you know, but the end result was just as good. But other than that, I, I totally agree. These are very, vibrant colors which is which is nice a lot of times with the contrast paints or the speed paints you kind of get a bubblegum look and I didn't find that with these these are very vibrant they're very well saturated a really really good color range I think yeah. on these yeah um, something else I want to slide in here while you're talking about you had to step back and shake the paint again I know now that you need to get these paints and shake them up really good but I don't think anywhere in here does it tell me I'm supposed to shake this speed paint up really well before I start painting with it. Yeah. Shake them good. I feel like I'm playing e-glue pop. If I hadn't been told that, 
I don't know if I would have necessarily known to like take the little pot and shake it up real well. Some you can see separation right. in. You're like, ooh, like peanut butter. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you're yeah. like, oh, okay, it separates. I better mix it. But I just want again. It's yeah. if it's really foolproof. There are a couple of things you need to tell me that are might seem dumb. Yeah. And and but that's it. You gotta go for the lowest common denominator. Yeah. Shake the paints really well. That's all that takes, you know, in there somewhere. Right. Instead of a little quarter, a quarter of a half sheet here of explanation, each of these steps being maybe that full half sheet yeah. or something, um, for sure. All right. So then moving on, we have metal. And I don't know, I might put number three or four in this as well, which is the details of the miniature. Um, this one I found to be really fun because yeah. on, on the miniature specifically, again, I don't do battle tech, so I don't know specifically, but I found this to be a lot of fun. I think the, the metallic went well over the speed paints because we yeah, just did actually, on everything yeah and like in the speed paint over here the speed paint step they mm -hmm. they we we went back to it and we we're like oh i guess they left this gun in part of the mech just on primer right. yeah and we ended up actually speed painting at everything but even with that mistake the metallic went over the speed paint really well and i thought it was an awesome metallic paint. Yeah. It is so punchy. I love that silver. It's so strong. Mm -hmm. I mean, immediately I'm like, ooh, I'm enjoying the way this goes on and the way it makes the mech look right away. Right. So I really liked it. Right, because it also didn't have that sparkly look that sometimes I feel like metallics can get, where it's just too much. You yeah. Know, too shiny, yeah. too new. I thought it was a really good one. And again, it went over the speed paints really well. Some of the colors, obviously, it covered better than others. You know, the red, you had to do a couple different coats on. The yeah. blues, I had the blue, I had no problem going over. Um, but then with the details as well. So the details is when we get back to the regular paints. The war paints is what they call mm -hmm. them here. So that's the yellow, the blue... And I think those are the only two colors we use. Well, we use the brown for the base, but yeah, we'll get to that yeah. in a minute. So the yellow and the blue. Um, I thought the blue went on really well. Its pigment yes. went well onto all the colors. The yellow, by nature of yellow, we did have to do a couple different coats on it to get it to show through. The nature, uh, the, the, the yellow was also a little bit like that speed paint blue, though, where it was what? real funky and goopy and like... After a good shake for a while, we, you know, I remember like pouring some out and it was like clear runoff. Like, yep. oh, what is this? The medium, yeah, it just wasn't, it was up in the tip still. So we had to like drain that out and then reshake it and then, then get it. But even then, it still just didn't feel like the other paints. Even then, I still felt, like you said, it was more gloopy, yeah. like the blue speed paint. Um, but other than that, yeah, I think the details and the medium, I'm sorry, the, the metal and the detail step were. A lot of fun to do and mm -hmm. that's where I really felt like I brought some personality to the miniatures. So then we wrapped it up with basing and weathering. Uh, the basing we just coated the bottom in a brown. It does show a final product over here which actually has basing materials on it but that yeah. is not included. So by basing they do just mean painting a cons uh, one consistent color on the bottom. Uh, I think that went really well. I mean in fact in these pictures you're seeing it with just one coat of this battlefield brown on it. So I think it did go on really well um, and, and would be able to right on top of this put additional basing material or a quick thin down second coat I think would would wrap these up. Yeah they talk about um, stippling over here in the final step I also wasn't so sure about that they're like you know talking about how you're supposed to use a little bit of this metal and a dry brush and stipple a little weathering effect scattered around the model. The br You can't stipple with this brush I, you know what I mean yeah. you can dot with it um, so I thought that was also very weird, and I, I, it just kind of looks like some parts got repainted a little bit with the silver. It does not give you that. I mean, in in their picture here, it looks great. Mm -hmm. It looks amazing. The weathered look of some of the, like the paint coming off of the mech again because it's scuffed up. And you know, I, you know, I couldn't really do that again with the brush that's included. It just kind of looks a little messy, but. Um, or, or rather too clean, maybe, I guess. It doesn't look scraped off. It looks repainted in silver. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm not sure I would have, in this guide, I'm not sure I would have mentioned, gone into, let me t teach you about, you know, using a dry brush and stippling and weathering. Well, and I feel like maybe that step could have been uh, yeah. not included in this learn to paint. Yes, maybe just leaving it out, but definitely needed kind of like a... 
for more advanced techniques, try this, you know, mm -hmm. and give me a second little leaflet or something like that, that I could take it a step further. Because I do think without that step, if you are just getting into painting, the steps one through five through the basing, I would have been very proud of this result I as agree. a first minute. This yeah. is a lot better than my first miniature that I painted. <laughs> like having no, this. I agree. This, um, so feel it, the same way because, and especially good, it really works well that these mechs, and this again is what it's intended for, and what we painted it on, that they do take one color speed paint color, so it's variations, and, and can work really well with that. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can't do this to some like jungle adventurer dude. He's just gonna look weird. He's gonna look like one sh one color with a couple different shades. But on the mechs, it, fan it, it works fantastically. And you go from a gray mini to something that looks really neat on the table mm -hmm. very quickly in what I'm gonna say is five steps, because that sixth step is just weird mm -hmm. to me. But yeah, absolutely. I think I would have, if this had been my very first one too, I would have been very proud of this. And I would have really, which I am actually, been super into speed paints. Been like, oh my gosh, I love this. This is cool. Like you can, the dark lines and the recesses are darker. You got some highlights. You got some. This is awesome. You know. So yes, I think it does that very well. So I think getting into painting can be very overwhelming, right? And and if you're like me, then when you got started or you're thinking about getting started and you're just like watching a lot of videos and feel like you're taking more in more information than you're actually utilizing because it's terrifying just to mm -hmm. get that brush wet that first time, right. right? So being kind of a newer painter, how did you find this? I guess kind of final thoughts here. Did you feel like this helped you build in confidence to be a painter um, or did you find it kind of overwhelming? I think this is generally a success with a few missteps along the way. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I think when you, and it is targeting people who are into battle tech, so I should also preface with that, that you'll be painting ideally a mech. Not maybe the exact mech in their picture, but a mech you have, okay? Uh, because like I said, on some other figure, it might not look as good. I think it's very well done, even though there are clear, obvious moments where they are lacking information, in my opinion, and then adding extra steps that I think should have been left out, like the weathering and the stippling and all of that stuff. There's also then a QR code right on this guide right here that takes you to their general YouTube channel. Not useful, you know, it says uh, video guide. Not true, like that takes me to your YouTube channel where you probably have a video guide somewhere among your dozens of videos. Right. Um, but I think as a beginning, brand new, step one painter, this is a good way to get some paint, like you said, on the brush, on the mech, seeing what you get. I think you'd be pretty happy with that. And then learning what works for you, what doesn't work. Like, I think this stippling step is almost designed to make you fail and then mm. you once you're done you're like nope that sucks and i think that's fair too you can say that at, like in the beginning too this the step one i don't think you're going to come out of step one feeling confident right so it is kind of the two ends of this which yeah. kind of leaves you kind of that ugh feeling you yeah, know I agree. the beginning doesn't set you up for that wow look and now it's ready and i can go and you're, you're not kind of seeing it you know because it's not even paint and then the end does kind of leave you like oh did i just ruin my miniature right so, overall, though, I think it's a solid way to get a few paints, a brush, and a decent guide on how to put that paint on that mini. So, overall, I did enjoy it, but there's some clear caveats there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think my final thoughts are very similar. Um, I feel like we have been nitpicking this and kind of tearing it down a little bit. So I want to be clear that at the end of the day, I really do like this. And it is one that I would recommend to people. Yeah, me too. If, if you've watched some videos, if you kind of have an idea about these things, but you're just scared to get the brush wet, mm -hmm. you know, or, or put paint on your miniatures, this is a great first step. Whether you're into battle tech and don't want to touch the armies that you've already built up, you know, yeah. your actual ones, or if you're not into battle tech and you just need to 
hold a paintbrush for the first time. You know, something like that. I think this is a great first step. Like you said, I think that the guide itself is lacking and needs some more clarification and details and expectations, giving right. you expectations. You know, a little blip after priming. It might look splotted at this point. That's okay, trust the process. Hey, for watering down your paints, see this page in our painting guide, something right. like that. Just a little bit more uh, reference to the own, their own material that they already have. But at the end of the day, I do think that this is going to leave you with a product that you're proud of. At the end of the, at the end of the day, the battle techs usually come in four or five miniature packs. So if you tried this on one, I could immediately see myself excited to try it on the next one and improve a little bit. And by the yeah. time you've done this four times, we tag teamed this, but by the time you do this four times, you're going to be able to see your progress. And I think be really happy with your end result. And ultimately, what more do you want out of a painting starter? Right. You know, gives right. you a good range of colors, gives you a brush to start with, and four opportunities in one pack. Yeah, I know? agree. I agree. So. Yeah, and the, the colors in here, which is also at the end of the day, the one thing you are also retaining, not just gathering that knowledge, but you've got some paints now, finally, assuming these are your first eight or ten paints. There's some good paints in there. I love yeah. some of these colors. Yeah. They, they are vibrant. They are fun colors to paint on minis. So that's another thing. You want to have colors that excite you to keep you wanting to paint. You know, you end up with this awesome burnt red guy. He looks awesome. I mean, I love that color. I want to put that on everything now. So <laughs> I, I think that's also a success there. Awesome. So I think maybe for both of us, I don't want to put words in your mouth, probably like a recommendation on this. Yeah, I if think you're looking so. Into. Yeah, yeah, check I it would. out. Just don't... I, I feel like, unfortunately, they rested on their laurels a little bit because they know that there are videos out there that will help you. Mm. And so, unfortunately, you have to do some of that lifting a little, a little bit. you got to do a little legwork. But fortunately, there is a lot of videos out there that will help you. And forums. You know, yeah, if you're, so, oh my gosh, I did this step, how's that work out? Yeah. So, okay. Uh, that's going to be it for us here, the Army Painter Battletech Paint Starter Kit. Thanks for joining in. Uh, have you tried this set out? Be sure to let us know if you found success with it. Um, you know, maybe even post your pictures down below. But until next time, thanks for stopping by the Dice Tower. I'm Camilla. I'm Z. Take care. Get the brush wet.